Hey, good evening and welcome to our Live About Seriously. As always, we'll always bring you the phone and we'll keep you here and say good evening, say good night and we'll say good morning. You know, uh, this week has really been very busy for a lot of people. Uh, people are tidying up. I need to first understand before I go into anything, how did the traffic in Lagos begin? Where, where are all these people coming from? Did the people they bring, they, they bring back all the time from uh, Libya, do they come with their vehicles? Because I, I don't understand the number of, and see, those of you who normally travel, especially our Igbo brothers, who normally travel for Christmas, go now. Go, don't, don't spend Christmas, go. The traffic, or it looks like some people now come from other places to spend Christmas in Lagos. If you are coming to spend Christmas in Lagos, leave your vehicles. Come with public transport. Eh? The whole place is jammed. You're not taking, okay, we went to drop somebody at the airport that, is going, that was going to America and we're going to London. We dropped the person. The person arrived in London. We were still in traffic. Six hours traffic. And, and, and more people are coming before Christmas. So please, um, uh, whoever is in charge of traffic in uh, Lagos, reduce it. Um, and then, um, well, well, a lot of things happened this week. Uh, Bonaboy turned himself up, uh, turn up, turn up, turn up. Bonaboy is a turn up king, and uh, just so that everything <laughs> is sorted out. Well, you see, Bonaboy is a turn up. Um, I apologize on behalf of uh, sad kick. <laughs> Well, God, God, I've, I've prayed to you that you should make me tolerate him. Masa, but the, the traffic in Lagos, I think is a good thing, okay? It's that's turned to a tourist attraction. Because Lagos is so beautiful. By the time your car is moving so fast, you won't appreciate the things you have around. Okay, that's why they make it slow. They slow down the speed of everybody. Now, you, you get to notice that there's a building around you, very beautiful. So we need to appreciate what you have, sir. And now, everybody knows their space in traffic, sir. Nobody take my space. You just see some cars. There's a big space. It is mine. Nobody dare enter it. Every 4.30, I'm inside that space. On the Nobody dare. Dares. And so you can't correct me on national TV. I cannot. <laughs> you can't disgrace me, yeah? It's okay. So. All right. All right. Okay, so, as I was saying, as I was saying, uh, the traffic issue needs to be sorted out. But there are other things that happened uh, within this uh, week that just passed. Uh, today was all week four. Only for Olamide's concert, uh, it was at the stadium, jam-packed. Everywhere was full. And today was uh, uh, the Ovation Carol as well. Uh, where am I? Okay. Yeah, Ovation Carol. Ovation Carol was, was today and uh, it's still going on now. And for um, a lot of people who look forward to that. Uh, and there's so many concerts that are coming up. Whiskey has a concert coming up. Davido has a concert coming up. Um, we also have, a, there's, a, there's one person, other, one other person. Uh, Files. Files has a concert coming up. Uh, there, there's one too. There's one concert. I'm trying to remember the concert. Speed Ellington. Speed who? Yeah, when he takes a step, he hear band. Be the band, the guy. Yeah. He has a concert. Who wants to go? And read him unplugged. Or, uh, okay, yes, there's read him unplugged. Yeah. yeah. There's read him unplugged. Uh, it's happening. And then a uh, Made in Worry is happening in Lagos. Made in Worry in Lagos. Uh, is happening. And all of this concert is just for the festive period so that people can have a place to go and enjoy themselves. It's going to be a wonderful time. All right? And uh, you know, of course, uh, all of that is this year. All of that is here. Then we start the new year with the January 1st concert. And it's, uh, it's a classic event. It's a unique event and it's a premium. And so we will be expecting you to, to key into that. And if you're coming into Lagos, you can come into Lagos, have a wonderful time. When you've, when you've said Happy New Year, you can go back outside. Then, then you are allowed to come into Lagos, yes, if you are coming for January 1st concert. Okay? Okay. Today, it's a different kind of show. Um, it's a different kind of show. I've, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of young people. Young people hold the destiny of this country in their hands. But you see, there are very few old people who then decide the fate of... Um, of the young people. And so the way it is, is it's just simple. It's that the young people don't vote, but they complain the most. The old people know that the young people won't vote, so they push some young people to vote for them. 
so that they can continue to rule over the younger people. And the younger people are not even illiterate. They are not literate enough to know that the voting power rests with them. So we need to do a voter education. And I brought someone who will do that for me. But before he comes on, uh, you know, of course, uh, Simon Keys is here. Simon Keys. Uh, we, we, need, we always play... Before now, we always celebrate a classical song, Nigerian classical song. But what we want to do now is that we want to play, as we've been doing for the past three weeks, uh, a Christmas song. Right? Yeah. Um, so, which one are we playing? Which one? Christmas is in the air. Kilo yeah. Yeah. No, the key. That's Billy Key. Billy Key. Something. It's, it's very, very unusual, very unique. And only you have it, sir. Uh, you know, every, that's why when you pray, they say, lead us not into television and deliver us from. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, now that's that's the song. Uh Okom Moye Faithful. But then again, uh, we are now calling on all voters, everyone that can vote, anyone that is entitled to vote. Make sure you have your voters card and you're ready to vote. It's called PVC, but it's a voters card. All right. Uh you have to have your voters card so that you can take part in the electioneering process. Uh, before we do that, every youth especially those of them who plan to travel out because there are so many things that are worrying them in this country. Health is not there, education is not there, transportation is bad, security is not there, but you have a reason to travel. Think about it. Some people spend as much as 2 million naira to get out of Nigeria. If you have 2 million naira, where are you going? There are people in this country that have 300,000. In fact, 100,000, they won't travel. They will make it here. So please, uh, to talk to the youth, especially those who are just coming back and those who plan to travel, I want to bring to you a motivational speaker, a man who speaks my mind, a man who speaks a lot of minds, a, a man who's, he's not just a motivational teacher, he's not just a coach, he's, uh, he's a factual man. He, he speaks it and tells it as it is. Please, help me. I think you're going to be giving him some uh, background bed so that he can, when he, when he talks and in the heat, you get bang, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing Fela Durotoy. Fela. My chair. Yeah, well, sit there. Good evening, Nigeria. And before Ali says good night and good morning, let me say to my, my very great Nigerians all over the world who are watching this program that I, my name is Fela Durotoye and I am proudly Nigerian. And many people would sometimes ask me, Fela, why are you so proud to be a Nigerian? And I say, well, the, the one thing that makes me so proud to be a Nigerian is that there is no other nation in the world that is remarkably as blessed by God as Nigeria. This is one of those countries that all over the world, no one doubts, not one person, how much has been invested in the land and people of this nation. But I think one of the things that most people cannot understand is how can such a blessed nation have such a people so poor? It's like a, it's like a paradox. And you know the paradox of, of the poverty of a blessed nation is one of the things that makes people very discouraged, dissatisfied, and, and they begin to get so distressed to the point where most of the time they begin to disdain the potential of their nation and begin to say to themselves, maybe, maybe Nigeria is not for me. Maybe I can find hope and opportunity in another place. Well, I've come to share with you my own little story. And I hope that in the next few minutes, it will be able to help you find your own story in Nigeria. You see, I know I don't look it. Chairman always says I look much younger than it is, but I'm 46 years old. I was born in 1971. But you see, in 1970, my parents were both lecturers in the University of Toronto, Canada. And apparently, somehow, you know how it is, before you know it, I showed up. And so here it is, whilst I was still just enjoying the Canadian water, Canadian milk, Canadian everything <laughs> inside my mother's stomach, my mother told me a story a few years ago. And my father could not tell me that story because my father passed on when I was only 11 years old. But the story that my mother told me was that my father dreamt one day in Canada and he woke her up and said, you know what, this one we have to take home. 
is a special one. Now, I know that the chair is going to come back and talk to me about that one because he's going to ask me whether I'm Mourinho, but that's, that's not the point. <laughs> and this is very serious, guys. She said to me, at very, very late stage of pregnancy, they had to try and get me back. As you see, most people, when they hear my name and they think of me as Fela Durotui, they don't realize that Fela is not just the nickname of a rascal. Fela is a shortened form of a name called Ulua Feola Me. Ulua Feola Me. It's from the prayer of Jabez. God, enlarge my territory. And so whatever it is that my father saw caused him to decide that they had to bring this baby, instead of having him in Canada, they had to bring him back to Nigeria. So I was, I always like to say it this way, I was, I was conceived in Toronto, Canada, but I was received in Oluya Labadon. And when my father was going to name me, he chest out to say yes. His name is Ade Tokumbo. We brought him from Overs. And you know, every time people used to call me Tokumbo, when I was growing up, I got so angry because it always reminded me of the fact that I was, I was cheated of my Canadian passport. Because I have only a Nigerian passport. And you know what I decided was that, I, you know, as things got so difficult in Nigeria, and I started getting to the point where a Nigeria that I knew that worked, and I got, that I grew up in, started to, to become a problematic nation. And then, I, and then I started getting upset. I was so angry with my parents for cheating me. Until one day, I read a book. It was a book by one gentleman called Miles Monroe. Many of you know him. And the book was called Understanding Purpose. And it was that book that changed my life and my perspective. And you see what that book taught me was that everything was created for a reason. You know, nobody bothered to ask me where I wanted to be born. Obviously, if they had asked me, I would have said Canada maybe at that time. <laughs> nobody asked me when I wanted to be born. If they had asked me, I would have said maybe I would have come at premature six months before my father decided to have a dream. Nobody asked me to whom I was going to be born. Nobody even asked me what circumstances I wanted to be born in. But many of those things that I've just told to you, what, you know, why, oh sorry, what, how, where, all of these things you can find out very quickly in your life as soon as you're growing up. The one thing that I find out that most people sometimes don't know is the why I was born. Why was I born? Why was I born? And sometimes it's not just why was I born, why was I born here and why was I born now? And those two questions, through that book called Understanding Purpose, I started to ask myself, why was I born in Nigeria? And why was I born at such a time as this? One of the things that that book started to help understand is that everyone was born for a reason. Everyone was not only born for a reason, they were also born with what it takes for that reason to come to pass. You see, each and every one of us was born with certain gifts, talents. And that talent is supposed to be for one thing and one thing only. Not just to make you shine. The talent was born in you to solve a problem for your time and your space. You see, each and every one of us, the day we become problem solvers, we will stop crying about problems, we'll start looking for problems. Somebody has to understand that the day I understand that I am a package of solution, that I am carrying a solution to a problem in my time and space. And when I understand that the day I find that solution, then I will have the opportunity to create value. One of the things I found out in life is that, listen to me, every time you truly create value when you solve a problem, wealth will come. Now, I must confess to you, wealth may not come when you create the value. Me wealth may not come where you create it, the value. Wealth may not come through whom you create the value. Because you can solve a problem for somebody and that person will not pay you or not pay you well. But I promise you, the laws of life were not written by you. They were written before you were born. All you have to do is understand them. And one of the laws of life says that any time you create value, it will come back as wealth. If you maintain it, multiply it, and if you manage it well, it will become prosperity, not just for you, but for many people. Listen to me. I found out something, that you and I were created as solution providers, and that every time we come in with a mindset that we have to make a positive impact, 
that that solution will come out. Every time you decide that where I was born must be better because I was born there. You see, the Nigeria of your dreams or the America of your dreams or the anywhere of your dreams, those places were built by people they call nation builders. Nation builders have four characteristics. A, B, C, D. A, nation builders accept responsibility for the well-being of their nation and not just for their own personal well-being. B, nation builders believe. They believe in the potential of where they are born. They believe that where they are born can be better than where they are today. They believe that what it is that can come out of what it is that they have today can still be better. And most importantly, nation builders also believe that their generation has what it takes to be able to birth that greatness. But A, they accept. B, they believe. But this is the big one. C, they must commit. They must commit their time, their energy, their treasure, their talents, their gifts. And they must D, do everything they can to deliver the future. Now when I talk about the future, I'm not talking about just a time zone that is yet to come. The future is everything that you can be but you have not yet become. The future is everything you can have but have not possessed. The future is everything you can do but have not yet done. Now let me quickly just say to you as I close, I want you to understand this, that you are not created only to come into a place to get from it. You are created to come to give to it. And what you have to give is already inside you. So I want you to begin to think about it this way. There's no need for you to try to run away from Nigeria. There is a problem in Nigeria that is chasing you. But maybe what you don't understand is that that problem was what you were created to solve. And that you already have what it takes to solve it. Please understand, in the nations that you are going to, they have only one thing and one thing only. Every time you leave a less developed nation to go to a more developed nation, you are called an immigrant, a second class citizen. Every time you leave a more developed nation to go to a less developed nation, you are called an expatriate. You see, it doesn't have anything to do with how much knowledge you have. It only has to do with where you are coming from. You see, I have seen, as I have traveled all over the world, the way that people, especially the poor people of poor nations, have been treated. But I think that the day that my life really changed was the day that I myself was traveling to the U.S. for a leadership program. I was flying business upper class and, and to cut the long story short as we were about to board and they were boarding people like us first because we were supposed to be the big boys. I saw this very elderly gentleman and his wife, Nigerians. At least, well, they looked Nigerian to me, but they looked like clean money. They looked like people who had worked for their money. To cut the long story short, these guys got to the point of the boarding gates where they were just supposed to check their boarding pass and let board them and, and the lady, the, the lady who was there checking it said they should step aside. And then a few other people passed, then I got there and then they told me to step aside too. To cut the long story short, I found out that what I had in common with those people was not just the color of my skin, it was the color of my passport. <laughs> and so to cut the long story short, the lady brought out something from her, from inside her jacket and started to look at the passports of the people. And as she was looking at those passports, I realized when she got to my own, she was looking at my American visa. And I looked at it. Here, here I am. Listen, you don't understand. I am an upper class passenger. I'm a frequent flyer. The visa, the American visa this lady was looking at, I had used about four times. And it wasn't yet one year old. Because that tells you that I'm a frequent flyer. And I realized that, look, you see, by the time she wanted to give me back my passport, I, I, I refused to collect it. She said, sir, what? I, I said, what were you looking for? She said, I was just trying to look for the authenticity of your visa. I said, but you can see I'm an upper class passenger. He said, sir, you have to understand, the reputation of Nigerians is not very good. And we have to check every Nigerian, no matter how successful they are. Cut the long story short, I got on the plane with tears in my eyes. And I said to myself, the following things. That the ordinary citizen of a great country will forever be treated better than the great citizens of a failed nation. Mm. The second thing I said to myself mm. is that, Individual success will forever be disdained if we have collective failure. You see, you can never out-succeed your country. 
You were not born to out-succeed your country. You were born to make your country succeed. And when your country succeeds, no matter how poor you are, you'll be treated with respect. See, nobody that escapes from Nigeria can escape the disrespect, the disregard, and the disrepute. So we have to build our nation. We must build Nigeria into what it has the potential to be, the most desirable nation to live in. Because God has blessed Nigeria beyond all nations. Everybody knows it. And so I'm asking you to become a true nation builder. This is not the time to run away from Nigeria. This is the time to build. And to build Nigeria, you already have what it takes to do it. I'm only calling in you to say, bring that thing forth. Let us deliver the future of this country together. Because we can, because we must, and because we will. God bless you, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Fella! <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Please Bro. take a seat, take, take a seat, take a seat. First question. Hey! Exactly. Okay, after this, we come from this sorry, break. Sorry, sorry, what's, no. what's my jam registration number? No, first? no, no, no. Right after we come back from okay. this break, after we come back from this break, we'll be coming back from this break. <laughs> 2018 on a happy note, attend the Alibaba January 1st concert at the Eco Convention Center, Lagos. Time, 6 p.m. Regular tickets, 10,000 naira. For table bookings, please call 080-33-33-0000 or 080 332 Alibaba January 1st concert is the most premium concert in Nigeria. Alibaba January 1st concert, produced by Boomi Davis. Alibaba seriously today is hot, 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 hot. Uh, and, and so you man's, know, you know, you know, man's you, know hot. you know the first question I'll ask is special one. <laughs> Why special one? Well, I was told by my mom mm -hmm. that that was what my father said. And like I said, unfortunately, whilst I did meet my father and I had the privilege of growing up with him for okay. about eleven years, my father never really got to tell me what it was that he saw in his dream. Okay. But whatever it was, he felt that this child must not be born outside this country. He must be born in Nigeria. So he denied you the Canadian passport first. It, that was, in fact, for 26 years, I did not like the man. You, you and T.A. are the same thing. Because T.A.'s mother, it was like two weeks to delivery. The mother just <laughs> jumped on a plane. T.A. said, what? Should be they said that some people who deliver on the plane and become international citizens. They, they, in fact, See, she landed two days later. She gave birth. To my, my own. If you go and look at all my, all my secondary school, they, it's Tokumbo Duro to a Tokumbo, and I will be so angry every time they call me Tokumbo. <laughs> Before even the concept of fairly used, because every time it will remind me. But you know what? When I found out my purpose, mm -hmm. that my purpose was to build the nation that I was born in, then I began to understand why I could not have been born. You see, today. All the things that I have been able to do to add value, many of these problems that I, that I have the opportunity to solve in Nigeria, mm. they have already been solved in Canada. So if I was in Canada, I would have been somebody trying have to value. sell. It's like, it's like, being, it's like they taking say, coal to you, Newcastle. <laughs> thank you very much. So you, you, you understand that the value that you will command in life mm. is tied to the problems that you can solve. Mm. And if there is no problem to be solved, there is no value to be created. So the whole idea was, I believe that I have a special value and it is, everybody has, in fact, in my opinion, everybody is a special one. And you said it's better to give to the nation yes. than to take from it. Yes. Because every time you give to the nation, you are creating something, value, and you will enjoy of that value. In my conversation with you some time back, you said something that made sense. You said, there's no nation in the world that imports generator. I want to prove you wrong. <laughs> what nation imports generator again? Uh, China. They import, eh? they import, yeah, they, they import <laughs> generator. To do what? To, to do what? They import generators at China, Zhengwang, Zhengwang in China. That's the capital of China. Zhengwang import generator, and it's because of the solar panel cannot derivate with the direct electrical fault. Hmm? It's something you should work on when you are speaking. Sir, you need to include it in your speech. All right. The Lord then, bless you, sir. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go quickly. The areas that I've listed. Um, 
in my as we were talking that I was just thinking about is education, health, housing, economy, security, infrastructure, employment, our culture and our history. Uh, these are some of the things that we need to to work on mm -hmm. totally. Which do you think are core? Let me first start by saying that the core is not any of those. Okay. Because the core is the thing that holds all of those things together. Okay. So the core is first a vision. Mm. It's like saying that you ask, we want to build a house. Which is most important? Mm -hmm. Cement, mm -hmm. sand, wire, P uh, a plastic pipe. No, it... Sand. They are all good. They are all required. Mm. But what house do you want to build? Mm. If you cannot first of all see the house and see what you want to build, the materials then the so. materials cannot deliver. They can't... The, the cement cannot work. So, so let me help you understand. So, so first you always have to stay to yourself. What is the picture of the nation we are trying to build? Mm. Once we know what the picture of the nation we are trying to build is, then we can now know what kind of education do we need to have in that nation. Mm. Then we can now begin to understand what kind of teachers we need to have there. Then the teachers themselves can have an idea. And I know book before. So it, it is. So 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 all these things that you have said, Ali, uh -huh. are important. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But the most important is first of all to have a vision. For the nation. That's what would drive every other and, thing. And, and let me be clear, a vision is different from a target. Because the fact that, let, sir, sir, Ali, you are a beautiful woman be and talking, I know I've always talking, told you, be talking, be I've talking. told you that you are a beautiful so woman. So the target Wait is you. different from a vision, first uh -huh. of all. Be, 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 so, sorry sir, I just called you woman twice now. Let me write this one down first. I, I'm not there really, but let me write this one down first. <laughs> vision. Slash target. We are going to talk about it now. Okay. But the fact that I called you a woman, did mm. it change you? No, it did not. Uh -huh. The fact that I call a target a vision does not change it. So if I... if, if Are you listening? Are you listening? I'm, I'm learning so much and I will speak on what he has said. No, no, hey. don't speak on it. Just listen. Just listen, please. <laughs> Go ahead. Just, just listen. So if you call vision 2000 mm. a vision, it uh, doesn't make it... A target. A if you call it vision 2010, it is still a target. Why? Because a vision is a desirable picture of a beautiful destination that when the people who hear it, hear it, they can see so much benefit in it that they will get on board that journey. And they help you actualize the it. And actualize it. Regardless of how long it will take, regardless of how far it seems, and regardless of how, how rough the road ahead is. So a real vision paints a picture of a beautiful future, a picture of a benefit to the people who hear it. So when you say Vision 2000, what do people see? No, we have passed Vision 2000. Okay, we're, when we're, you say Vision 2010, we the when you say Vision 2010, what did we, we see? We also changed that post. Okay, when I tell you Vision 20, 2020, what do you see? They've not shown us anything yet. That means that it's not a vision, sir. It is a target, but it's not a vision. Be talking, be talking. It is not a vision even if we call it a vision. It has to be something that shows the people. I believe the vision for Nigeria is to build Nigeria into the most desirable nation to live in. So if I ask you, what does the most desirable nation to live in look like? I'm sure you can tell me. Of course, but it will have all those things that I... That Fantastic. So why did you not say that when I talked about Vision 2020? Because that, those ones didn't have those things, right? Because you didn't see the picture. So in, the, in, in, a, in a most desirable nation to live in, the schools. Oh. I have seen the new Nigeria, sir. I've seen it four times. I can't unsee it. People ask me, why do I love Nigeria so much? Because I have seen the new Nigeria. If you see schools, Ali, primary schools, public primary schools, how beautiful they are. If you see the children, how beautiful, how clean. If you see the teachers loving the children like as if they were their own. If you see the roads in the new Nigeria. If you emotional. see the street lights of the new Nigeria. Ali, Dubai is not enough. Because Dubai doesn't even have any of the things that we have. The new Nigeria. When you get to the hospitals of the new Nigeria, the waiting room is like five-star hotel of the new Nigeria. 
So now we have to know, where is this new Nigeria? Is it in our mind? No, it is in our soul. And until most people begin to catch that new Nigeria and understand the same way an architect sees a house before it is built and they know that it can be done, that is the reason why I'm doing everything I'm doing every day to okay. work on this thing. There was something else. You, you rounded up with saying that uh, the ordinary citizen of a great country would always get treated Better. with respect yes. than a great citizen of a bad country would get treated. Omo, make you try an American anywhere. They will come for you. Just try. Hold them. Just try. They don't need to know his name. They don't need to know where he's from. In America, there's no, uh, is, he, uh, is he from the north, uh, south, or east coast, west coast? No. As long as you are a citizen of that nation. Now, let me be clear. Do you know that there is no country in the world that anywhere you are standing bears the name of that place? Do you know there's nowhere called America? Do you know? What I mean by that is, when your plane lands, Eh? Is it not New York you land? Mm -hmm. Or Dallas? Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, wherever it is. Mm -hmm. If no, There is nowhere in that place we call America that if you ask the people, where is this place? They will say, this is America. They don't say, it's no. Ijebo, they, 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 will say, say it. they will tell you, this is Pittsburgh. This is Wisconsin. This is Ohio. This is wherever it is. The same thing with Nigeria. So what is a nation? What is a country? A country is an identity that the people of a geographical zone are proud to associate with. What is a nation? A nation is a standard of living that is applicable to everybody within that place. So you don't have a nation yet until you can say that in Nigeria, no classroom should have more than 20 students. And whether it is Ijebu Odeo or it is Kano, standard. it is standard across until you can say that the distance between street lights are a particular length and the street lights must be a particular height and they must all be of a particular color everything must be intentional so that you are so intentional we must have a standard that is what nigeria is nigeria must be a standard that the world will look up to we can do it all right um okay let before we go the, 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 this just makes me the if i if i say ask for one what I because when he said uh, schools should have 20 okay. students in a class, uh, man, out of 30 students, I was 25. That means I won't be in school right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of us will be in school right now. Uh, no. Richard from Abuja. Richard. <laughs> God has to tell me. Do we still have Richard from Abuja? Are you sure you guys turned off by my speakers? It's on, it's on. It's on, it's on. Hello? Hello? Yeah, Richard. Hello? Hello, Richard. Okay, all right. So, uh, there was this song that uh, I heard that you like a lot. So, what was the song so that we can play it in a break? Before, because when we come back, we're going to go to a board. Uh, because before I get there, let me say this. Uh, we believe that a lot of people don't vote. Mm -hmm. Not because they stop them from voting, mm -hmm. but because they stop themselves from voting. And if you notice, in the last election, why more, in, I mean in America, why Senator Moore didn't get the vote was because the black people actually now decided... Yes, to stand up. Let's Especially stand up. Black, black women. Yes, the black women were like, let's, let's, let's make sure this man doesn't get back in. Because the man had abused and had said that the best, the great, the, when America was great was in the time of slavery. So he had cut the black people. Yeah. And then, of course, there were all the allegations against him. Exactly. Uh, about, you know, of so the women felt, listen. first of all, the women felt there was, that this was a person that they had to vote against and the blacks rose. So black women were the game changers. Yes. And, and, and it's important because a lot of people are beginning to wake up now that they, to realize that their failure to take part in the electionary process, as in voting, not even running, yes. voting, yes. allows people that shouldn't be there. Yes get into office absolutely and you know the very important thing is i always tell people i said i cannot run is different from, I, I cannot vote is different from i will not vote what's the difference i will not vote 
is a person who has the power to vote, but and is exercising the right to decide not to vote. That's a choice. That is a choice. Okay. I cannot vote. Has no power, no voice. Even no if choice. he's qualified to vote. In fact, he, can, he has no opinion. Because when you are talking about everybody can talk, anybody that cannot... You see, your, your permanent voter's card, that voter's card, is your mouth. You don't have it, you don't have a mouth. You can't talk. Anything you say is a thought. It's so, not a, so other people will talk for you. Young people will if talk people for vote, you. then yes. those people and are talking for you. And you know the interesting thing is that the people who have something to say, mm -hmm. who are the most intelligent, who are the most educated, are the people who do not have a mouth. Who do not even have PVC. So all of us are talking rubbish. Every election, they don't come. They, every in, when you look at the that's outcome, true. The people that then have PVC are those ones that don't understand the, the electioneering process or anything. To them, PVC is a two thousand naira or two bag of rice or and the people who are engineering. No, no. So let me be clear about something. Everything you are seeing, and we are going to get to it when we get to the board, was deliberate. It is a deliberate act of a people who are called rulers, not leaders. We have been deceived by men for many years thinking that they were leaders. Mm -hmm. Rulers are different from leaders. Mm -hmm. Rulers are people who subdue their subjects and subdue them so that they can rise. Mm -hmm. Rulers live on the power and the authority that their position gives to them. Mm -hmm. And so many times the people who sit down are the people who in, within political parties decide that they are going to be the Baba Oke or Baba Saleh, the, 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 the godfather. Juggernaut. The juggernaut. Political the juggernaut. Ju political juggernaut. And, and those people, what they do is that they decide to select rather than to go through a democratic process within their internal That's se sele selectocracy. I call it selectocracy rather than Instead democracy. of meritocracy. And when, rather than meritocracy. So what happens is this. And I, you know you and I were talking about this thing. I said they will never select somebody who has the capacity to de deliver. Because if I select Ali, and Ali will go and make the life of the people better, you can bet then that... Then I'll lose my then, power. Then Ali... Now, this is where the problem with power is. Is that people believe power cannot be shared. That for me to be powerful, you must not be. So if Ali begins to shine be with the people and they begin to love him, the power broker thinks that he will lose his power to Ali. Do you understand? So now I have to go and get somebody that cannot win an election by himself mm. because he has no vision, mm. he cannot communicate, he cannot do anything. Mm. We have to put him on stage. Mm. We will even campaign for him, then we'll bring him, introduce him. Then before they can talk, take, take anything, you just wave to the people. That's true. Then in the end, we say, vote for him. Because right? we can control him. Because now we can control him, him knowing that he could not ever have gotten to that place by himself. Now, what happens is this. Once I take an Ali that cannot be elected and I put him on the ballot box, the intelligent people are not inspired by Ali, so they leave him and then they don't come. Hello, Ola. Hello, Ola from Lekki. Hello. Can somebody come turn up my volume, Mike? Okay. Ola, uh, Ola from Lekki, uh, we lost you there. Okay, so I get that point. Um, what I'll do is that I'll get my cameraman. Hey, where's? Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll take we'll take the break. We'll take the break of uh, the Great Nation song. That's, that's it. My, that's my that's your song, right? Uh, uh, by Timmy Dakolo. Timmy Dakolo. Uh, you, you see, the song is loved by everybody, and nobody talks about where the boy is from. <laughs> you see, the boy is from Nigeria. All of we own him. All of we. So it doesn't matter. Just like if anybody's running for Nigeria, it doesn't matter where the person is from. He's wearing the Nigerian colors. Who talks oh. about where striker is from on football? When we are playing national national team. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let him score. You see, the reason why where we come from matters is that we don't know where we are going and what we're working on. Mm. Every time we don't have a clear goal ahead, we start thinking about things that don't matter. Because in truth, if you're flying to Abuja, as have long as the plane asked, takes off and lands. Have anybody ever asked, God forbid, me, I will not enter, is the, the pilot is from, uh, from Casina. Uh, <laughs> Nobody cares. Every time true meritocracy is required, where you come from does not matter. Mm. It's where we are going that matters. Go and look at it. Any time we need to deliver, where you come from does not matter. It is when you are not interested in delivering results 
that you start now talking about zoning. So when you start talking about zoning, you don't have desire to deliver on governance. What has it got to do? Is the price, please under, let me understand, is the price of petrol sold differently to the to the clan of the person who is president? <laughs> Do they buy? Do they buy foreign exchange at a different rate from everybody? Say you go to the bureau, they change. Say, oh yes, I, I am from. I'm, I'm from Katsina. Katsina. I'm from Katsina. Oh, say, say, 80, say, 80, 80 naira per dollar. Everybody suffers regardless of where who is suffering us is coming from. Ah, we'll take the, we'll take this song and when we we'll come back, we'll be going to the graphics. <laughs> happy note attend the alibaba january 1st concert at the eco convention center lagos time 6 p.m regular tickets 10,000 naira for table bookings please call 080-33-33-0000 or 080-33-33-0000 alibaba january 1st concert is the most premium concert in nigeria alibaba january 1st concert produced by boomy davis Davis. Uh, we have here that it's it's a task that I've taken on that we must educate our people about voting. Let the people know that the vote task card that they have is a power that they have to utilize. Uh, we're, we're inviting the INEC officers very soon to this show to tell people how they must get their voters card ready before the elections because what happens with nigeria is that we wait like a week to elections that's when everybody starts running where do i get my voters card i need my voters card so now you have to get your voters card early get your voters card early so that uh, we can so I, I need to just quickly say something about that voters card yeah that listen many times when you ask people why have you not voted you hear people say who will i vote for well, and one of the things I always say is, you are better off deciding that you don't want to carry something than you not being able to carry it. You are not called paralyzed because you don't carry something. You are called paralyzed because you can't carry it. So it's better for you to have your voter's card, even if you are choose not to vote. The choice of not to vote is yours, if you have a voter's card. If you don't have a voter's card, you don't have a choice. It's not, you don't even have a choice to make. So the first and most important thing is, don't wait until you say you see one person or you don't see another person. Go and get your power first. When you have your power, you can decide how to flex it. Mm. You cannot flex muscle that you don't have. Mm -hmm. So I want you to choose to go and build your muscle first. Get your voter's card. Don't wait for anybody to show up. Get it first. Then you can now decide what to do with your power. All right. Cool. So um, the age uh, between... Age zero and 17, you can't vote. Mm -hmm. Get that right. Even if you are Nigerian. If you are, <laughs> if you are in Nigeria, between the ages of zero and 17, you can't vote. Which is why a lot of people wait. As soon as they're 17, they want to get their voters card. Yeah, so, so this is one thing I have to take about this issue about the age of 17. Okay. So if you are already 17 years and six months old, by 2019, you will be able to vote. Because by next year, before the voters uh, 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 process, um, the it's process concluded. Of, is concluded, you would have become 18 years old. So if you are already, if you were born any time from June this year, you celebrated your birthday around June this year, you will be able to vote. So I want you to understand that, even if you are 17, now. Because by next year, at June, you will still be able to and there's a, there's a large chunk of people who will be turning 18. Oh my god, nearly, nearly about 20 percent. Oh, or yes, something. I mean, it's an amazing number almost 12 million people will be turning that that were born. Let me put it this way about 12 between it's about sorry, about 9 million people, if my understanding is correct, were born between 1999 and now. So, don't forget that those people who were born after Nigeria entered into democracy. Some of them by twenty by twenty nineteen they will be eighteen years old. They'll be and they can vote. They'll be nineteen years old and they can vote and they can vote. So my point is this: if you are already between the ages of seventeen and a half and above, you will already qualify. So some of you, if you are seventeen and a half, you may need to be patient a bit until your birthday is eighteen. But already start planning how to get your voter's card now. All right. Okay. So. And, and, and then it means that from, and the numbers, the numbers are huge. Between the age of 18 and 50, we have the largest number of people that can vote. Absolutely. The largest number. Absolutely. In the, the other numbers are between 51 and 7, and they're to call to glory. <laughs> the, 
between 51 and call to glory, the number is not even as much as the number between 18 to 50. Meanwhile, the people between 51 and 71 are the ones that are dictating the fate. It's amazing. You said something about destiny and fate. Yep. The fate of a country is the experience that the people have in that, in that place. Mm -hmm. So when they say the fate of Nigeria, is, that is what people are experiencing. But the destiny of a nation is what they can experience. Mm. That's what was given to them. Our destiny is great. Our fate has not been. Shongbo! Shongbo! And the reason why, listen to this, is that these guys are the ones who hold the destiny, like you said. This bulk of the voters. 18 to 50 hold the destiny of a nation, what the nation can be. 51 to 70 are the ones that are holding the fate of the nation, what we are experiencing. Votes me for president. So now, the people who, the people, and I always tell one joke, there is a reason why civil service, they say somebody must retire by 65. Because the value proposition has reduced. So, it's not because you cannot do anything. It's that because you see uh, anything you didn't do before 65 is time for you. Go and don't worry. Go and rest. Let other people come with fresh ideas. Mm. Let's leave that matter there. Okay. The number of people in this country now. So, now it is said that estimated, if you go and look at the world, the, what they call the world population counter, mm -hmm. Nigeria has sat about two days ago, had 192 million people. The counter actually counts based on the number of registered births and all of those kind and of about things. about 80 million of those are from Wari. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> in Shakiris, in Joe, Robos, we produce in numbers. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Right? But this is where it even gets interesting, guys. So, so, so listen to this. So whilst about 190 million people in the country, 55% of that... That is just a bit over 90 million people are over the age of, sorry, about 100 million people okay. are over the age of 18. That can vote. That can vote. So. Now, out of those 180 million people, INEC hopes that by 2019, 80 million of them will have we'll voters' cards. Will have voters' card. Okay? Now, let us now look at last election. But, but, but wait, the voters' card that INEC is calculating, Includes those ones that have not been collected. The ones that have not been collected, though. Because as I hear, nearly 40 million cards yes. have not been collected. Yes. So this is where it gets interesting. So last election, there were 96 million people above the age of 18. Mm -hmm. 68 million voters' cards had been issued. But only 28 million people used their cards. Well, let, let okay, me say, voted. Let me say there were 28 million vote casts. I don't know whether there were 28 million voters. <laughs> Let's see that has ears. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, but, but let's even assume. Okay. Let us assume that everybody, every vote that was cast was cast by a legitimate voter. Mm -hmm. There were still 40 million people that didn't cast votes. That did not cast votes. Either that they, are, they, are ready, they were PVCs were ready, they didn't go and collect it. Or, or they, they had, had the it, vote. They did and not it's... go and exercise the okay. vote. Okay. If you ask most of them why, they say when they looked at what was going on. They didn't feel like voting they were for anybody. Not encouraged. But then it means that if 22 million people voted, Look what about these people? I, I hope that the camera is catching this. See how small that number is. Mm -hmm. You know the beautiful thing about democracy is that democracy does not count the number of people who can vote. It only counts the number of people who voted. So even though the number of people who can vote but did not vote are larger than the number of people, people who, voted, who voted, democracy does not count absentee. So votes. whatever these people vote for, that is what will, will be binding on all of these people. Uh, the other people have the they will have the mouth to complain after election hmm. so now these 22 million people will decide education Pre everything everything and and the reason why is that the people that you vote for are become your elected officials and your elected officials are the ones who will choose the appointed officials and between the elected and appointed officials we call them the policy sector they, will they are the ones that the come up with the ideas that are to be implemented, whether they are good or bad ideas. And it will affect everybody. Then the public sector tries to implement that idea so that it creates the environment for the private sector to be able to work in. Shangba, I'm listening. So it is that policy space that you and I are supposed to go and work on. But when we don't exercise it, then the people that, that you know, I'll give you a very practical example. Etiosa local government mm. is 
is one of the largest local governments in mm -hmm. terms of population size, I mean, mm -hmm. emerging. That's our local government. That's our local government. Mm -hmm. It has Obalende, uh, uh, Ikoyi, uh, Victoria Island, Lekki, Lekki, Lekki. Lekki. Lekki mm -hmm. Oniru, mm -hmm. Aja. Mm -hmm. All of that is Etios a local government. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Etios a local government has something in the region of about four and a half million people, they say. Mm -hmm. Because it's the fastest growing local government okay. in Nigeria today. Okay. Now, guess how many people voted for our local government chairman a few weeks ago? 3.5. Guess again, sir. Ali, try, try. Maybe. One, just, one million. Ali, try. Just go down small. No, no, no. <laughs> no, just try. 500,000. Okay, try. Go down small. They didn't vote? No, no, try. Because... They, okay. 150, 150. Combined... Combined PDP and APC, 11,769 votes. So those 11,000 people, they are the ones that determine whether they carry the, log, the, 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 the dustbin on your street. Or whether the road is repaired. Or the road is repaired. Or the drainage Don't is Don't forget that there are very few state roads in Nigeria. Most roads, street roads in Nigeria are local government roads. So this, the road that leads to your estate, sir. Is those 11,000 people that yes. determined... And you will and be it will there. be binding on all there, four million people. There will be the, those, those, whatever the eleven thousand people voted for. But there's a trick here, because the number is few. Yes, eleven thousand people. Yes. It's easy for political godfathers yes. to influence them. Absolutely, because you can pay them. You can pay those few people. But you can't pay forty million people. You can't pay forty million. Even those forty million, they are not even asking to be paid. So elections will not cost as much as they do. If those people who don't collect money will came actually just come out to vote. In fact, not only will not, they not cost the candidates money, those people will give through crowdfunding to the candidates. Because when I want something, if I want a better Nigeria and I find somebody that can deliver it, I will pay that person. Remember something. Every time somebody pays you money, it it takes, this is money. Mm -hmm. Who has the right to be served? Is it you that collected the money or me that paid you? The person that paid you. Good. So when I go to the petrol station and I pay the attendant, who has the right to be served? Me. I'm the one that yeah, paid. The one, yes, Good. One that paid. So I'm the one that has the rights. Yeah. If I go to an eatery and I pay, who should be served? You. So why do you think a politician will pay you so that he can serve you? There is right. nowhere in your life in this world that anybody pays to serve they pay so that they can be served so any politician that comes to offer you money is paying you so that you will serve him but wait oh, if i come to the petrol station and i pay you you can only serve me to the extent of filling my tank of how much i've paid if so maybe five minutes seven exactly, minutes yes. depending on where if i give you in an eatery, you pay me to the extent of what, what I, pay I paid for. for. And in about two minutes or three minutes. When a politician pays you, you serve him for, for the four tenure years. of for his four years. For four years. But sorry, sorry. It's not four years. No, Mama Ali. Ali Mama, uh. she too, she will serve because you collected money. Oh, so All so, your so children will now be part of so that. So you are not the only person that is serving the politician. Your children will serve the politician. Your parents will serve the politician. Your brother will serve the politician for the amount of money you are paying. All right. So, from, from this indication, it means that everyone that wants to influence the dynamics of their children's lives, the future of Nigeria, must get a PVC first of all. You don't have any... Let me put it this way. Your PVC is the passport to the future. That is the passport that you hold. That is what you have as an access to determine the future of your children. Without your PVC, your children's fate is in the hands of people who don't have the time to see your children become what they want to be. All right. Fela Drotoe, thank you so much. And uh, on that note, we'll say make sure you get your PVC. Yes. Make sure you get your PVC and uh, be ready to vote. Uh, the INEC officers will be here uh, sometime next week and uh, we'll try and get them to expatiate on this and how people can get their Get your PVC now. Now. Don't wait until the elections are near. Mm -hmm. Don't say, who will I vote for? It is better to get your PVC and not know who to vote for 
and choose not to vote for anybody than for you to not have PVC, even if the kind of people that you want to be in place come. It is possible. I keep saying to people, 2019 will have pleasant surprises. It will have. And there's, will, there's something else. Not there's something else. The people, that something else. people shouldn't wait till it's four years to go get their PVCs no, no. because there could be by elections. Yes, indeed. And when by elections come yes. and you don't have a PVC and you're waiting for four years, yes. you have missed you, out. You missed out. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll take a break and thank you so much again thank for coming. You. And when we come back, we'll be taking uh, someone who has built a fashion industry that connects from Ibadan to Lagos. We'll be right back after this break. Your 2018 on a happy note. Attend the Alibaba January 1st concert at the Eco Convention Center, Lagos. Time, 6 p.m. Regular tickets, 10,000 naira. For table bookings, please call 080-33-33-0000 or 080-33-33-0000. Alibaba January 1st concert is the most premium concert in Nigeria. Alibaba January 1st concert produced by Boomi Davis. 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 All right. I, if you're if you're watching from anywhere across the world, I'm sure you are wondering. Uh, after everything that fella has said, uh, the song that was played was King Shati oh, oh, Why ya? Why ya? <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, it's, oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that's the mindset of a lot of people, yes. uh, and uh, we're trying to, to correct that. Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I told you, the people who run out of this country to go become something else outside, and then the people who are here that have decided that whatever I decide to do with my talent and the skills and the God-given gifts that are inside me, that is what I'll do. Now, now there's, a, there's a young man... He makes clothes for me. Let me just say that. And uh, he's not in Lagos. He's in Ibadan. But he still makes the clothes bespoke. Sends them to Lagos. And I bet you he actually has more customers in Lagos than in Ibadan, where he's uh, based. So, uh, Aramada, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you Good so evening. much. Yes, sir. Well done. I saw you at Ovation, Red Cap uh, Ovation Carol yes. this evening. You were wearing a suit. Yes. Yeah? A Beautiful uh, tuxedo, and then now you've changed again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, brother, how? When did this journey start? About four years ago. How did it start? Oh well, I was in a paid employment, and then uh, the paid employment wasn't paying as much. Uh, so it wasn't a well-paying employment. Oh well, it is a well-paying employment for people who think it is. But hmm. For me, it is not. Fela, did you hear that? Well, you know there's a difference between gainfully employed and painfully employed. <laughs> there are many people that are painfully employed, not gainfully employed. Okay. All right, so... That was, that was painful employment. I mean, so what did you then do? Uh, well, I uh, started um, contracting outfits to tailors. Okay. Mm -hmm. I pick up the jobs, uh, get tailors to do the jobs, mm -hmm. until they started disappointing me. Mm. So Tailors do that a lot? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, since they are not working from my space, I have uh, little, little or no control, control over, over them. them. Mm -hmm. So after that, I saved up and got my machines okay. and employed tailors to work with me. Okay. Yeah. In Ibadan? Yes. Okay. So how did you decide that the market is in Lagos? Well, everybody knows the market is in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever Every, the bodies are, the market is in Lagos. As long as there's so, money inside the... So the everybody knows uh, the market is in Lagos. And um, for you to actually get um, the crowd, okay. uh, you need uh, an area where there are more people willing to get your product. Okay. Uh, we don't have as many people wanting bespoke outfits in Okay, in Ibadan. Yes. Okay. Um, many people see the town as a... Um, as a, a town for, as a civil retired, town, yes, for yeah. retired people that okay. just come to rest. Even though the um, narrative is changing now. Okay. Right now, things are changing a lot. Okay. Compared to 10, 6, 5 years ago, okay. things are changing now. So the entertainment industry is here. Uh, a lot of um, entrepreneurs are in Lagos. Okay. So the best thing for me to do is, okay, come to where the entertainment industry is. Entertainment people wear more outfits. Like you said, I was wearing the suit at Eco Hotel. Okay. Now I'm wearing the Agbada. 
If I have to go for another event, I'll have to wear something else. Okay. The camera has seen me. That's what entertainment is all about. That's the, that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest scam that fashion designers are here. You and Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you guys have come together to make sure that artists will continue to buy clothes. Once they wear... It looks like... It looks like designers actually had a meeting. I said... Once he wears this cloth once, take a picture of it. If he wears it another day, take a picture of it. Put the two together and say, is this only cloth that you have? That way the person will have to buy another one. Oh, well. What, what? It makes the ministry move forward. Uh, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Very true. Uh, 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 and in Lagos, I think Bespoke works in Lagos. Cause bespoke? Yeah, Bespoke. Yeah, what you're wearing will speak for you. That's Bespoke. Uh, but if you buy those, beware because you cannot show for your world tell you anybody. Ah, who wash your food? Yeah, bye. Ask beware. No, Lagos. Ah, bespoke. Do a nice one. Thank you. Eh, uh, that's Mr. Inanna. Eh, uh, that's the Mr. Inanna. Yeah, I'm meeting you. That's my bespoke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> how do you get fabrics? Do, do, do you get fabrics? In fact, from I've, I've had Ouch here on this show, and they said that uh, a lot of you have to buy fabrics from overseas. Yes. Not outside Nigeria. And then um, machines, servicing of the machines, the thread, buttons, and the rest of them, all imported. Why? Well, um, I think the, the industry is getting to a point where um, all these things will be locally sourced. Okay. You remember um, Nature and Wax? Mm -hmm. That was a Nigerian yes, company. Yes, if yes. we still have companies like um, Nature and Wax, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure people will patronize Nature sure, and Wax. Sure. But right now, we don't have um, companies that actually have um, um, fabric production. Okay. For instance, the Italian wool, which is the um, fabric the one, uh, yes. from which mm -hmm. your suit is made. Mm -hmm. We don't have any company spinning this here. So the Asabatex, uh, what, what was that? Aswani and all those people, all of them. Uh, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see them around. Okay. So the, what is um, easily available to us mm -hmm. are the imported uh, fabrics. fabrics. And then if you, if you um, walk up to anybody now and you tell the person, I want to make you an outfit, and you tell him, okay, I have this fabric from Ibadan, the first thing the person will do is, oh, no, don't worry, I have a tailor. <laughs> so, so everybody wants imported fabrics. Yeah, if you remember, nobody wants to wear a Nigerian suit before. Okay. Because once you say it's made in Nigeria, it's a problem. But now it is changing. I have we some are, of your suits. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are doing good jobs now. So if we have companies that will produce good fabrics mm -hmm. that I will make for you and you can wear anywhere without having the fear of washing it and losing okay, it, okay. then we will patronize um, okay. Nigerian uh, fabric uh, producers. Okay. But right now, the fabrics that we can use that can actually match up to the world standard mm -hmm. are those imported fabrics. Okay. If you don't want to lose your clients. Okay. Because any clients you produce for right now that is um, maybe washing his uh, outfit for the first time and is losing that same outfit, we we'll think you're what, what, Where do you get the stuff, the, the stuff you used to make those clothes, like uh, the thread, the inlays and all those uh, stuff? Lining. Like, lining and the, where do you get those from? Are those ones also sourced in Nigeria or imported? Imported. Okay. I don't. I am. Um, I don't have to source them personally. Okay. I have merchants that um, bring them in. Bring them and in. Because you, you going to source them would actually increase cost, your the cost. cost of production. Yes. Okay. So we have people that uh, bring them in. Some of them, when you go out there, you can buy uh, okay. the quantity. I would like you to make something for my sidekick. And because your outfit imported thread, Abi, it shows that you thread carefully. If one looks at, <laughs> <laughs> if one look at what you are wearing, nice one. Is that you should make something for me? No, yes. don't worry. It looks like you passed on it. You're, you're not. Uh, you're not. Hello, I patronize Nigerian. Give me a Nigerian thread. What do you think about that? A Nigerian thread. Yeah, Nigerian thread. Owu, owu. Yeah, owu. That right on my body. PVC. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay, so. How, what, 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 what's your plan of opening a shop in Lagos? Is, is it like, because you're still, you're still coming from, because every time you make something for me, and you've gone into shoes. Yes. I'm wearing my slippers. Can, 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 where, leather works. You know, do you still buy leather in Nigeria as well? 
No, it's imported too. But they make leather in the north. Uh, well, you know, there the are tanneries are all, all in there the are north. different types of um, leather. leather okay. Yes, <laughs> you have the ostrich leather, you have um, crocodile skin, several types. So I think it's it's just it's just ideal for you to go where you know. You get when I'm buying this leather, if they tell me it's crocodile skin, it's crocodile skin. Because you have um, um, some leathers that are, that are painted. Okay. After you wear the shoe for a while, you see it has the, some grey patches. Will come off. Yeah, okay. the paint will come off. And once that happens, it's a problem onto whoever. But you have it. a problem with. No, that's a, that's a, they make leather in the north. Their intention is to make leather. But when it's coming to Lagos, it comes as Pomo. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been consumed. All right, okay, so, uh, okay, hello, hello, good morning, hey, morning, how are you? I'm fine, okay, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Lagos, this is your, your guy from French country, oh. Sunday, I mean, uh -huh, the French guy, speak French with him, oh, yeah. Jovet yeah. Chobet, I'm here for, Fella, <laughs> <laughs> you are wondering what he spoke, Abi. He spoke in French. It's very small. Eh? <laughs> As Francois. Ça va, ça va. 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 Ça so, I don't know, uh, we have uh, Fella Droto here. We have Aramada here. We have uh, Simon Keys. And uh, yeah. we have uh, Ayinana. And, yes, uh, uh, I, I want to talk about this, uh, fella. You know, the guy has left a, a wonderful message that touched my heart, you know. This is a wonderful thing. If some of us in Nigeria can understand what he's saying over there, you know. Like, for example, like me now, when I was in French country, I don't have ID card, I don't have a Gotas card, I don't have passport, you know. I, I have to come back to Nigeria and get all those things. But... You know, Alibaba, one major thing in this our country is that when you do this and uh, 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 an identity card or uh, voter's card, before they give you this, it can take one year. Okay, I'm asking a question. Where are we going to, you know, at least we will have those machines that will produce it immediately when you do it. You know, it, it's painful in our country okay. that you do a voter's card they will not give you at least, uh, or maybe after one month or after two months, they will tell you one day. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know. All it's right. Actually. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Uh, fella. Well, let me say that the process of registration and and in, and his election itself has been improving over time. Okay. So yes, it is true that Nigeria is 57 years old. Okay. But we don't have 57 years of democracy. Okay. We only started, we had literally... 13 years ago. Only, only, only about, uh, about 16 years ago. Okay. Or 17, well, mm. now, it's, now 17 years ago. Yeah. So I want you to understand that things are getting better. Don't use the last election's experience to judge what you will do now. Listen. We, you and I, you put up a, an amazing post on, on social media, on yeah. the PBC. Yeah. I also reposted it and I added my own thing to it. Cut the long story short. Do you know the number of people that said between day before yesterday or three days ago and now that they have already gone, they have, some of them collected their temporary voter's card, others were told by INEC where their voter's card was going to be, they should go and pick it up. Okay, all right. So we'll take a break. When we take a break, we'll be coming back with the PBC. I will be coming back to the show. 2018 on a happy note, attend the Alibaba January 1st concert at the Eco Convention Center, Lagos. Time, 6 p.m. Regular tickets, 10,000 naira. For table bookings, please call 080-33-33-0000 or 80 -8782. Alibaba January 1st concert is the most premium concert in Nigeria. Alibaba January 1st concert, produced by Boomi Davis. Davis. So we're back. Uh, uh, was it yesterday or was it yesterday? Uh, or yesterday or today? Uh, it was uh, the president's uh, birthday. Yesterday. Okay, yesterday. Okay, now it's yesterday. Okay, the president's birthday, so we want to toast to the president. And we also want to toast to Arsenal. 
All right, no, but seriously, uh, a toast to Mr. President and uh, the Pope. The Pope, both of them had their birthday celebrations, and so on behalf of all Catholics, we're going to toast to these two uh, world leaders and uh, pray that uh, God will bless them and, um, and bless their followers as well. Uh, that will be our toast. Uh, but uh, quickly, I would like to also mention that uh, there, there's a, a lady, uh, Dr. Yolanda, uh, Dr. Yolanda George David, uh, she's uh, the servant in charge of uh, the Atlanta's uh, Betel Foundation. She always does this market square where people come during Christmas and festive period and she gives them things that they use to celebrate uh, the, the festive season. And so the next one is holding in, um, in Festac, uh, CPM International Festac, plot R opposite 209 Road, uh, 2nd Avenue, Festac Town. It starts at 9 a.m. Normally, we don't leave there till about like 9, 9 p.m. People just come there, they get clothes, they get food, they get everything so they can have a great Christmas. Um, the Market Square is a happiness edition, and so we would ask that uh, on the 23rd of December, all of you find a time and uh, come there. So, widows will be uh, catered for first before they now talk to, they now assist every other person that needs help. So, if you have a donation or anything that you want to give, uh, this, uh, check my page online and check Atlanta's uh, foundation. You would also uh, get uh, details about that. Uh, that's it. Um, <clears throat> please, the PVC thing is serious. Would like you to make sure you get your PVC so that you can take part in every electioneering process that is happening in this country. It could be a by election. If somebody goes in and you don't like the person and the person is to be removed, you will need your PVC to make that happen. We need you to make sure you get your PVC and be ready to vote. Get your PVC. Don't wait till two months to election, three months to election. Get your PVC now. Get it now so that you can have a voice, like Fela has said. Because if you don't have a PVC, you are mute. You are mute. And we need you to get your PVC so that you can determine the future of this country, the people who lead us. And not even, because once you don't do that, then people begin to rule us. That's it. Get people who will go in there and lead. And when they leave, we will follow. But when they rule, we will be punished. All right? Please Anyone that is, on, that is over you, that you did not give permission to do so, is ruling over you. Mm. Anyone that you are the one who said, I am assigning you to go and get the job done. You are the one that is the boss. They are serving you. Mm. Anyone who serves is leading. Leadership and service are the same word. So I want you to understand that you will never have leaders until you have servants. But you cannot have servants who are not sent to serve. If you don't vote, you are not sending them to serve. Therefore, they cannot lead. Therefore, those that are come on top of you are ruling you. And if you are ruled, you are a subject. But if you are led, you are a follower. Not everyone that is in position is a leader. Okay. All right. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> that's, that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to say. But you know, we celebrate an artist every time on this show. And uh, the person we're going to celebrate is Fela. Yeah. The, the other fella. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he fought a good fight. Absolutely. He protested against uh, maltreatment of anybody. Absolutely. And uh, so he's, going, he's the one that was there. So you play a fella song. We'll, we'll sign off with that one because uh, uh, we'll now propose our toast. So the toast to the Pope, uh, the leader of the Catholic communities across the world. Uh, who did something even great in about, uh, about a month ago? He was given a car that was worth 300 and something thousand pounds and he gave it to charity. That is service. That is service. That is why you called him the leader of the Catholics. The charity deserves it. Leader. He serves. Charity deserves what? Yeah. She deserves it. She must have done something that the Pope, you know, that service you are talking about. Yes, and do something, be loyal to people. Now she's driving a car. No, charity is not a charity person. Charity is not a person, no. But he began at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's, let's rise. Oh, my. Let's rise in toasting to 
the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who just celebrated Sorry. his 75th birthday. Uh, Aina said he doesn't toast because he's already in a relationship. No, no, today is even a sleep year. We're celebrating sleep year for the president. <laughs> and, uh, Fela Drotoye, uh, a very passionate Nigerian. Uh, we also had uh, Mr. Ayinana. Mr. Ayinana? Yeah. Okay, you came out so that they will see the new shoe. Come, 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 come. All right, please. Uh, Ayinana just bought some new shoes. Uh, they are made in Nigeria. Made in Nigeria. Okay. okay. So, get your PVC. <laughs> now. <laughs> we vote for this shoe. <laughs> shoe. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.